Hello, everyone, and welcome to Campanelli Stadium, normally home of the Brockton Rocks, but playing as the home today of Brockton High School, taking on the visiting Bridgewater Rainham Trojans. Thanks so much for joining us here on the broadcast booth. Brad Shams alongside Matt Nelson for a yearly tradition here at Campanelli Stadium. Of course, the Brockton Boxers playing their majority home schedule here at Campanelli Stadium. Meanwhile, the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans coming in on a road schedule matchup. As this ball sails high and away for another one here. Let's take a look quickly at our starting offensive lineup here for the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans. Leading things off over in center field is Colin Ronane. As this ball goes inside for ball four. So Ronane will take the walk here and start things out here for Bridgewater Rainham. So continuing the lineup, it's the pitcher James Nichols, then Cam Morrison, the catcher. Following it up is Nolan DeAndre and Kevin Doyle. And then the final four, Michael Logidus. Tyler Cataggio, Ryan Manning, and Trent Smith. And this one will sail over for a ball as well. Jezekiel and Chostegi is the starting pitcher here for the Brockton Boxers. He's already got a walk listed and his scorecard tonight. And runner goes, popping up is the catcher, throwing over to second base and can't make the play there is Genitasio. And so now there is a runner in scoring position off the crack of the bat here for Bridgewater Rainham. Great jump on the ball there for Ronan at first. A little bit of a high throw to second. In standing up. 2 1 count now for James Nichols, the pitcher for today's Trojan lineup. And Chosky takes a look to second and the pitch. This one popped up and this will be foul. This will trickle in by the stands on the first baseline. And so Cal will advance to 2-2. On deck is Cam Morrison. And Chastagy takes a look over to second. And the put away pitch on the 2-2. This one lined out towards center field. This is going to drop for a base hit. Rounding third is Rone. And he's going to hustle towards home. And he's going to score the opening run of the ball game. RBI single for James Nichols. And it's a 1-0 ball game here already for Bridgewater Rainham. Yeah, fast start here for the Trojans. That one sliced right up the middle on the line drive, headed towards the right center field gap. Cut off by the center fielder who was in good position to grab that ball, but not fast enough to get the throw home on the Trojan rounding third. Ronan has some great speed in the top slot in the BR lineup. Chastagy misses that one, and so it'll start out for a 1-0 count here for Cam Morrison. Morrison, a longtime giant future, playing AAU and EBL as well under Coach Glenn Tufts for Bridgewater Rainham. Also played with Nakona. And the next pitch from Machowski. This is belted out towards center field, making the catch is Cooper Card, and he'll retreat back to first base. And so Morrison runs into the first out of the ball game here for Brockton, and the runner over at first in Nichols remains. Good to see the new uh, the new lights here, Brett, at Campanelli Stadium. The scoreboard back up and running again. You know, there's been a lot of changes here, Matt, in the offseason, and the culture sorts to starting to feel really bright. It's 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 turning the direction in, in the right way. And, you know, the Rocks are really sort of looking for a good season this year. They've had a lot of prospects, you know, come in this offseason, and the, the turnaround this year is, is looking strong. You mentioned the lights. They look brand new. They are absolutely cranking right now for the, the gloomy day that this game is played on. The run over to second. And the throw will not be online there from O'Brien. So stolen back there for James Nichols. But yeah, the scoreboard's back up and running. The lights are going in. Campanelli Stadium is turning the page here in a new leaf for 2022. And you certainly hit the nail there. So digging in here is Nolan DeAndre, the right fielder today. And the cleanup hitter in the four spot. Definitely a physical hitter and lots of power coming in this kid. Two balls and two strikes here for DeAndre. On deck is Kevin Doyle. And Chostagy takes a look and the deal goes for the breaking ball and he leaves that one up at the head. 
Three balls, two strikes now, and a full count for DeAndre. Taking a monster lead over at second is Nichols, and the deal, this one inside of the barrel and fouled. That will ricochet off the right field fencing over there. Remains a 3-2 count now. Brockton looking to play sort of a deeper infield here. The middle infielders over at short and second, and Foreman and Genitasio are playing towards the grass, and DeAndre is retired for and Chostagy's first strikeout of the day, so make it two outs. Runner at second, still in scoring position. And that'll now bring in the lefty hitter of Kevin Doyle. And Chostagy looks over to second, and the first pitch sails high and away there from Doyle, so it'll be a 1-0 count to start things now. Last year, these two teams played at Campanelli Stadium as well. Bridgewater Rainham took the victory over Brockton. It was a pitching duel, and Chris Carbonara for Brockton was the one that really was pumping strikes, but Bridgewater Rainham was the one that, at the end of the day, got to the bat and was able to produce the most offense possible. One ball, one strike here for Doyle. The shortstop and Foreman holding on the runner over at second base. And this will get through for base set. Rounding third and scoring is Nichols. Throw to the plates offline. Air mailed. This will hit the backstop. Rounding second base is Doyle. He's got himself an RBI once again. It's 2 nothing Trojans. Yeah, tough throw with the wet ball. Sammy Balti out in left field. Looks like he had that one maybe slip out of his hands a little bit. Yeah, you can see the throw was completely offline there. Over towards O'Brien, and with that, it's a 2-0 ball game already for the Trojans. We'll see how much weather plays a factor into this one. It has been slightly misting all day. No heavy, heavy rain. Yeah, we came up here, and there was a little bit of some, some dew or moisture up in the press box. So you could tell it was, you know, there was some precipitation a little bit, but... Nothing too bad to where they had to either delay or postpone the contest. So we're lucky to be playing some spring baseball today. This one trickled off the end of the bat there for Logitus. And that'll be foul over by the first baseman in Ensco. So over at second base is Kevin Doyle with two outs. Michael Loginus, the second baseman, the man digging in now. He's got himself a one ball, one strike count. On deck if they can get to him is Tyler Catagio. And the 1-1 one -one deal and a swing and a hard miss there from Loginus. Making a ball and two strikes now. And the deal. This one hard hit over towards Foreman. Bobbles it off his chest. Makes the throw over to Ensco. Did he pick it? Oh, no, it it's offline. This ball gets through. Rounding third and scoring is Doyle. And making his way all over to second with the error is Loginus. And a crucial error there from Foreman. And it's a 3 0 ball game now for BR. The Trojans typically one of those teams. They'll capitalize on any single little mistake. The drop ball at first base. Results in another Trojan run. Yeah, just an offline throw there for Foreman. Mark it down as an E6 in the scorebook. And this one's late swing and fouled. Ensco trying to get there, but this will be into the bleachers. Making an 0-1 count here to Tyler Catagio. Foreman at short, Perez at third base. They've been Fairly busy early in this one. Attempted curveball comes in up and in inside. Yeah, 1-1 one, one count now for Catangio. And we mentioned that middle infield playing fairly deep in the early first inning, not really holding too much pressure on at second base. And the 1-1 one, one pitch, this is grounded up the middle. Foreman gets there in time, almost knocking the bag. Throw over to Ensco, and he gets it in time for the third out. 
So a tough first inning defensively for Brockton. They'll go to swing the bat now in the latter half of the first. Three nothing BR. You are listening to Bridgewater TV. Latter half of the first inning here at Camp in LA Stadium. The Brockton Boxers up on the offensive side of things right now with the pitcher in Nichols getting started here for Bridgewater Rainham. Digging in as the shortstop in Brady Foreman looking to rebound from what was a tough inning defensively for Brockton. Allowed three runs, the majority of it on errors and little singles. And so they'll hit the offensive side of things. And Matt, this is a team that has really had a lot of adversity this season. They're playing with 10 kids on the roster today and they're just looking to get a rebound win against a Bridgewater team that's surging into the playoffs. Yeah, very, very short roster. Ty Erickson is the only substitute for the Brockton Boxers. He's going to figure there's not a whole lot of pitching depth there. Should be our uh, get a few more runs, but they'll start it off strong with a strikeout here on Foreman. And so Foreman will strike out here for the first out, and that brings up Nick Genitasio. Let's run through the offensive starting lineup here for the Brockton Boxers. It's Brady Foreman, then Nick Genitasio and Brady Ensko. Following the cleanup hitter and Sammy Balti and Adam Perez. Then it's Jezekiel and Chazagi, then Jackson O'Brien, followed by 8-9 of Cooper Card and Brett Keen. And so now we see Nick Genitasio with a nothing in one count now. Here's the next pitch from Nichols, goes for that slider. Oh, a headhunter into the Trojan dugout. And that one a brutal inside pitch and sent towards the Trojan side. Nothing in two now for Genitasio, and so Nichols starting off strong here for the Trojans. And here's the 0-2, and this one lifted out towards right field, and this will go into the bleachers. Nothing in two now. Quick look at the Trojan defensive set. James Nichols on the mound. Kim Morrison doing the catching for him. Ryan Manning is... Uh, Tyler Catoggio is at first base. Michael Laguidas is at second. Shortstop is Trent Smith. Third base, Ryan Manning. Left to right across the outfield, Kevin Doyle, Colin Ronin, and Nolan DeAndrade. And this one roped out towards short, making the play and throwing over to first. And Bridgewater Rainham will get their second out. So one two punch so far for Nichols. And the defense for the Trojans so far rolling on all cylinders. It sounded like it might have hurt right off the end of the bat. That was a very loud ground ball to shortstop. So that'll bring up Brady Ensko, the first baseman now for Brockton. And first pitch. That will float in there for Ensko. And the 1-0. That one flied in, late swing and a foul ball. So a 0-2 count now quickly. Barring our French here for Ensco. On deck is Sammy Balti if they can get to him. Then Adam Perez. And that one just missed there. So ball and two strikes now for Brady Ensko. And the put away pitch, swing and a miss, got him outside, strike three. One, two, three punch here for Nichols. And the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans starting out with a bolt here at Campanelli Stadium. We'll take a short break here up in the booth. You're listening to Brockton Boxer Baseball presented by BTV. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. D E P R. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety. I thought so. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. For 24 hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1 800 662 HELP. Learn more at SAMHSA.gov slash support. Top of the second inning here, and we round out the first inning. 3-0 in favor of Bridgewater Rainham. James Nichols steamrolling. 
Getting a 1-2-3 punch, letting his defense do the work. Recorded two Ks in that first inning as well. And so that brings up the 8-9 and the top of the order here for Bridgewater Rainham, starting with Ryan Manning, the third baseman for their contest today. And the next pitch here from Enchostegui. That will miss inside for a ball. So we start out 1-0. Enchostegui hasn't had too, too much problems uh, controlling the ball. So far, a couple curveballs looked like they may have slipped out of his hands in that first inning. And yeah, Chastagy really trying to work that breaking ball and sort of work that variety of a pitch selection here. So quick 3-0 count here for him on Ryan Manning. And here's the 3-0 pitch from the windup. And he goes for that fastball against the right down Broadway. 3-1 count now for him. And now we'll drip into the dirt there for ball four. So a leadoff walk here for Ryan Manning. And so already BR cranking on all cylinders again in this second inning. And that's really where, if you're Brockton, you want to make sure you're getting the outs in the 7, 8, 9 part of the lineup. Leadoff walk here to start the second for the 8 hitter, Ryan Manning. Let's see what Trent Smith can do with the 9 slot. So here's Trent Smith, and he'll rope that one in between the gap at third and short for a base hit. That'll advance the runner and Manning, and he'll end up with a single. So back-to-back -back knocks here for the Trojans, and they have a no-out first and second situation here. Yeah, Trojans playing very, very aggressive in, in this uh, Southeast Conference game. The Trojans and the Boxers. As you mentioned, the Boxers have adversity. Just five wins on the season. Yeah, the Boxers have had their adversity and their troubles. And then Bridgewater on the opposite side has been doing really well. This upper class is really starting to hone in and really sort of find their way here during the season. So we're back up to the top in Colin Ronane. And the next pitch to Ronan, he'll take that deep out towards left field, racing back his Balti, and he'll make the catch for the first out. And that'll leave both runners right where they stand. And there's one out on the scoreboard here for Enchostegui now. Quick look at the replay, solid contact. Good play out in left by Balti. Back up to Nichols, he pops this one up by the backstop, racing for it as O'Brien, can he make the catch? And he will by the wall, and looking to advance from second to third, there was Manning, and O'Brien just gets there in time. And so a nice piece of fielding there for two outs, and just like that, the situation is quickly turned around. You can see O'Brien quickly trying to make his way over by the backstop, and just manages to make the catch there. Just happened to look at second base when he spun around to see Manning take a few steps towards third. And so with that, we will get a brief pause here as they adjust the tape over for Jackson O'Brien. That draws things up for Cam Morrison. He's 0 for 1 with a flyout. So far to Cooper Card, who was his former teammate in the Giants Futures organization. Now foes in high school ball. And Chastagui takes a look over at second. No pressure. This one popped up in the infield. And Chastagui waved off by O'Brien. He gets under it and he'll make the catch for out number three. So two runners left stranded here for the Trojans. And that'll wrap up the top half of the second. We stay at 3 nothing. You're listening to a presentation from BCS and BTV. We return here, bottom of the second inning. It's Balti Perez and Enchostegui, the three do up here for the Brockton Boxers, starting with Sammy Balti. And the next pitch from Nichols, that one a towering fly ball over by the third baseline, hustling forward as Manning. Can he make the catch? And this one 
is out of reach, and that'll just trickle over by the canopy over there in left field. We saw James Nichols mow down the first three hitters here for Brockton. And this BR pitcher has really found his own in the earlier parts of this ball game. But he'll, now he'll have to face the four, five, and six hitters who traditionally in a baseball lineup look to bring a lot more power and physicality. That one inside there from Nichols. And so we continue at a 1-1 count. And this next one downstairs, and he'll leave it there. Two balls and a strike now for Balti. Nichols has had a very good mix of pitches. The, the couple strikeouts have both come on fastballs, but he's had a, a decent slider working, even with the the, uh, the moist ball. Yeah, you can still feel the mist here at Campanelli Stadium, certainly, as you mentioned, Matt, before, playing a factor into how this game's going to be played. That one chipped on the inside part of the bat and foul. 2-2 Two -two count here for Balti. One of the returners for the boxer lineup. Played last year on varsity as well. And the 2-2. Two -two. This one off speed. This one ricochets over to third. Manning gets the pick and goes for the throw over to first. And what a pick there from Catangio to get out number one. And a beautiful 5-3 setup there for the Trojan defense. High hard chopper down the line. One bounce to uh, get all the way to third. Long throw, a little bit low, but making the play at first, no mistake there for Tyler Catogio. And then I'll drop Adam Perez now. Perez swings at that one and fouls it back to the backstop. And so we'll start at nothing in one. Especially with the mist here, it's really tough to figure out where this ball mat is going to end up. There's so many different directions that it can play, and so many variations that a single baseball can do, especially with the moistness and the, and the dampness that it can hold. Yeah, great scoop there as we take a quick look at Katagio's pick at first. Ball and two strikes now here for Adam Perez. And the deal, he fouls this one back, and that'll be sent back to the backstop again. So one ball, two strikes here for Bridgewater, Rainham, and James Nichols. And the put away once more, and this will be sent out towards center field, and that'll drop for base hit. So the first set of the ball game for Brockton. Falls on the bat of Adam Perez, and he gets the first man on here for the boxers. Hard line right up the middle. The timing for Perez, absolutely perfect. That ball going directly over second base. If you're Brockton, you're going to do what you can to get back one at a time here. And there's nothing more simple than getting back into a ball game than some small ball and... That's what the boxers are looking to do here with Zeke and Chosdegui. Facing a 1-0 count to start out his first at bat of the contest. And the first pitch, the swings and misses at that one, making it a 1-1 count now. On deck is Jackson O'Brien, the catcher, who's been busy so far through the first one and a half. And Chosdegui expecting fastball on that first pitch. Got a change up. This one popped up in foul territory. Trailing backward was Catagio, and he lost sight of it. And that will end up being foul on the drop. Yeah, you can see the pop up here. Almost looked like he lost it in the lights here. One of the hardest things to do is track a baseball, not only against the lights, but the overcast sky. Yeah, especially when... It's dark and gloomy like this. That ball is going to blend in. And the one-two pitch. This one flown out towards right field. This looks to be foul. And this one will ricochet off the bleachers out there. And will stay at one and two. Better piece there for Nchostegui. But still trying to catch up to it a little bit. He's still swinging just a little bit late. 
Chostigy digs in, in the stretches, Nichols, and the one-two got him downstairs, and the tag will be applied by Morrison for out number two. And so make it the third strike out of the day here for James Nichols. Yeah, you see the breaking ball right there, got him, and then the tag by Morrison, so fundamental out there for the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans. Nasty curveball, dropped about a foot and a half right at the very end. And a foul here to start out O'Brien, the catcher. First at bat here for Jackson O'Brien. Nichols takes a look over to first base and Perez, and now the deal hits the outside corner flawlessly, so nothing in two here to O'Brien. They can get to him on deck is Cooper Card. Nichols in the stretch. Takes a quick look and the deal. This one a hard grounder over to Short. Scooping it up is Smith and he'll flip over to Logitis for out number three. And so runner left stranded at first base for Brockton. And we head it to inning number three here at Campanelli Stadium. Three nothing to score. You're listening to a joint presentation by BCA and BTV. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Welcome back, top of the third inning. The Boxers after a rough first coming back in the second to strand two Trojans on base. They will face the four, five, six hitters in the Bridgewater Random lineup. Nolan DeAndrade will lead off Kevin Doyle and Mike Laguitas also do up for BR. And Chostigy back on the hill for the Boxers. DeAndrade a strikeout victim his first time up. Hard hitting right fielder for the Trojans. Ground ball right up the middle and Chostigy grabs it on the comebacker. And his throw to first, one pitch, one out. Yeah, one of the big things that is so crucial as a pitcher is that reaction time. And you saw in Chostigy right there, really just able to make the clean play. You see the replay here. Just watch the ball come right off the bat here. And he's able to make the scoop with ease, just reach down and grab it and make the throw over to first base. So nice clean play there from Inchostegui, and that's what you want there for your pitcher. And the first of what could be many trips out to the umpire with a towel to dry off some of those spare baseballs. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be uh, a frequent thing. You see that a lot with uh, rainy and misty days like this in baseball, so... Fortunately, that's what you got to do to keep these baseballs dry, but, you know, if you want to play the game, there's some sort of process that's got to happen. Quick 2-0 count here to Kevin Doyle. He singled and scored the third Trojan run his first time at the dish. It's a liner out to right field, and getting there in time was Brett Keane. Two away. Yeah, nice play here by Keane. Doyle really just pulled it and got the inside part of the bat. And Keane, the fast player that he is, was able to get there in time and make the catch. So good transition there for Brockton. They're having themselves a clean last couple of innings if they can get through this bat or here. We just reached on that throwing error by the shortstop back in the first inning. Be huge for the boxers to log a one, two, three inning. Yeah, and it's certainly a morale booster, especially when you had the, the first inning that uh, and Charles DeGay and company had there. It's certainly something that you're going to want to boost your confidence. I fly deep to left field. It's still going back, and it's going to two hop the wall all the way out in deep left field. Heading for third now is Laguitas, and he will get there safely. The throw was offline. 
Yeah, sometimes when you reach the bottom half of the lineup, you don't know what you're going to get. But watch it. It's got every single inch of this ball. You see the replay here. Just able to get it right on the middle parts of the barrel. And just going to reach for it was Balti there. And just sort of had to play damage control. So a two-out triple here for Bridgewater Rainham. And they're right back into the thick of things on offense. That takes a lot of power for a high schooler to two-hop the fence here in a professional ballpark. Ground ball to shortstop. The throw is going to be in time and online for out number three. The Trojans strand one more. A two-out bomb by Laguitas. Left him at third base. No runs, one hit. No errors in the top half. Of the third, we'll head to the bottom half where the boxers will send up their eight, nine, and one hitters. You are watching the Trojans and the boxers on Bridgewater Television and Brockton Community Access. We're back in a flash. Bottom half of the third will get underway. Cooper Card will lead us off. Brett Keane and Brady Foreman also do up for the boxers. They trail three. Just one hit so far for Brockton. They look to get it going. They had a little bit of a slow start in a game against Cardinal Spellman earlier this season. On the fifth or sixth inning, they were able to get the bats going. Yeah, the batter now, Cooper Card, who stepped in. He just got called up from junior varsity, so making his first start here for Brockton on the varsity lineup. and. He's really been someone that's been a journeyman and has put a lot of effort into this season. He had a good stout, too, with JV, so he'll be playing the eight batter spot here. Oh, he blocked. gets drilled in the back here. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. That is what a varsity fastball feels like to the middle of the back. And it looks like a two-seamer that just got away from Nichols. Card shakes it off, takes his free base. That'll bring up Brett Keen. First hit batter of the game for Nichols, just the second base runner that Brockton has had so far. Looks like Morrison will go to the mound just to give Card some extra time. Well, these joint productions are always fun. Of course, our hosts, Bridgewater Television and Brockton Community Access, the great Jeff Fowler over at BTV, our director, Mike Moriello, Mary Evers, John Luck, Mark Dean. I'm, I know I'm missing someone here. Ball gets away. The throw down to second is airmailed, but in the right place was the shortstop for the backup. Of course, for the BCA side. We've got Mike the Postman Simmons, the one and only. Brett, you know why we call him the Postman? I don't, actually, no. Because he always delivers. <laughs> always. <laughs> Ball and a strike to Keene now with Card on second base. Chopper to third. Throw over to first is in time. Card will attempt to advance and get thrown out on the twin killing. Perfect tag applied. So that is a 5-3-6 double play. Yeah, let's just break this down. You first saw the pick play, takes a look over to second, and then makes the throw over to first base in Katagio. Then he's able to make it right back across the field and just goes to show how much power Katojio's got in that arm of his and they're able to get the pick play so two outs in one swing and BR's got themselves another situation here on defense yeah, that's not ideal for the boxers having a runner with no outs on second base And as you said, just one swing of the bat, two away, clean slate for Nichols. Brady Foreman struck out his first time up, bunts it down the first baseline. 
three unassisted on the inning ending put out. No runs, no hits, no errors. Three up, three down for the boxers. For the second time this game, we will head to the top of the fourth inning. The Trojans still lead it three to nothing. They will send up their eight, nine, one hitters. Ryan Manning will get us started when we come back. You're watching Trojan and Boxer Baseball on BCA and BTV. Hello and welcome riders. As Massachusetts enters the latest phase of the state's reopening plan and more people are vaccinated, the light at the end of this dark tunnel is finally starting to brighten. Thank you to all the riders who stayed with us throughout the pandemic. And for those of you who are just now rejoining us, welcome back, we've missed you. Whether you're finally reuniting with family and friends, heading to a game, seeing the sights, or enjoying a long overdue and well-deserved night out, the MBTA is here to reconnect you with all your favorite locations. Whenever you're ready, we're ready. While many of you were away, we use the period of reduced ridership to accelerate construction and make improvements across the MBTA. From constructing bus lanes and new stations to revitalizing bridges and tracks, we've been hard at work building a better T to make it a faster, safer, accessible, and more reliable system. We are actively working to restore 100% pre-COVID service levels on bus and subway as quickly as possible, as well as fast-tracking hiring and training to help us accomplish this. As we build back, we aim to create a better system that reflects and meets the needs of our riders, both current and future. As we inch ever closer to the end of this pandemic, we must remember to stay vigilant and continue to ride safer while on the team. Current regulations require all passengers wear face masks while riding on the team, regardless of vaccine status. Please ensure your mask fits snugly around your mouth and nose with no gaps to help protect the health and safety of your fellow riders and MBTA employees. Though some things may have changed since the last time you rode on the T, we're here to help you navigate this new reality if you need anything. On our end, Ride Safer is our commitment to provide our riders and workers a cleaner, safer environment on the T. This includes everything from cleaning and disinfecting vehicles and stations to caring for the air we breathe. Every 60 seconds, our buses, trains, and trolleys recycle and refresh filtered air and completely exchange air at least 10 times every hour, which is more frequently than most indoor spaces. And we continue to develop and test innovative new ways to help you ride safer. You can learn more about our efforts and how you can ride safer at mbta.com slash ride safer. Massachusetts is open and we're excited to take you wherever you need to go. As always, thank you for riding the team. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Fowler, Bridgewater's meteorologist. Did tell us that we're expecting some some mist today. This is the the pre weekend cool off. So it's about fifty five ish degrees, kind of nasty out today. But Jeff says buckle up. This weekend is going to be absolutely stunning. We might even see ninety degrees. Yeah, I was looking at the forecast too, and thankfully Jeff Fowler was there for my side. He, man. Buckle up, Matt. I mean, it's going to be almost 90 degrees on Saturday, maybe even Sunday, too. I'll be up in Portland, Maine for that weekend as well, and it's going to almost touch 90 both days. And, wow, I, I have not seen a weekend this stunning in May in quite some time. Last May, because of all the rain, it kind of was just yucky the entire time. So It was part of a lot of yucky parts of last year. <laughs> Memorial Day coming up next weekend. Hopefully the weather will stay nice for that. Chostegui will return to the hill for the fourth inning now. The Trojans three runs on four hits, no errors. The Boxers no runs on one hit, one error in the field. Well, one low and away to Ryan Manning who walked his first time up. Just 
slices this one foul out to the right side. Ball and a strike to Manning. And Chastigui in the last few innings has really sort of found his groove. He had a tough time figuring out that pace in the first inning, but the last two, he's really been able to hone his defense and just sort of let them do the work. And he's been pumping strikes, exactly what you want from your pitcher in this type of situation. It's all about how you come back. Three runs in the first inning could make or break the game, but you come back strong and strand three runners over two innings with just two hits, no runs scored. Chostigy coming back in a big way. Two balls, two strikes now. The count to Manning. Liner right up the middle. Might have even touched a little bit of the pitcher's rubber. Lead off single for Manning. He's been on base in both of his trips to the plate. And you see just a nice ball up to the barrel there and he's able to drive it to center field. We mentioned small ball earlier and that's what Brockton was trying to do and looks like Bridgewater's sort of just returning the favor here and getting things started here in the fourth and it's been a really fast game so far. Only 40 minutes in and we're already almost through four innings. Runner on first, no outs. Now that was the fifth hit for Bridgewater Reina Machostegui. Steps off. Runner holds, O'Brien pump fakes down, no throw. Corner's not expecting the sacrifice bunt here. And strike one over the outside corner to Trent Smith. He singled his first time up. Chostigy glances over at first, he'll step off again. One one to Smith. High fly ball, left center field. Balti moving over. He will make the catch for the first out, and Manning has to retreat back to first base. One away. Yeah, we're playing in a deep outfield like Campanelli Stadium. There are going to be situations where you kind of just have these deep fly balls that turn into routine pop ups, and that's exactly what happened to Trent Smith. He got good contact, but. Just enough surface area for Balti to move around it, and he makes the routine catch. Manning takes his lead about six feet off of the first base bag. Strike one now to Colin Ronane, who is one for uh, oh for one rather. He walks and flew out to left field. One out here in the top of the fourth inning. Chostigy seems to be bothered with Manning's lead at first. He'll finally take off, and Ronan slices it foul off the third base side. Be a big situation here if Chostigy can get the second out, something that a lot of pitchers need confidence in is just being able to work in these situations with the runner on. Ronan now down 0 and 2. The Trojans dugout comes alive. The curveball dropped, and Manning will move up to second base. Just an easy situation there for Manning. He sort of saw the airmail there, so gave him the okay to take off. I mean, you see you had no hesitation, and the throw down wasn't even made. So good situational play there for Manning as this one driven out. Now at one hops, Balti. Will Manning try for home? He won't. Runners on the corners here with one out. Yeah, another small ball piece of hitting here. This one off the bat now of Ronane, who has his second 
Instance now where he reaches base. This one just gets in front of Balti here, and now you got runners on the corners with one out. A tough situation where you could potentially see two runners becoming in scoring position now if you see Rone advance from first to second. The heart of the Trojan order coming up. This will be the pitcher, James Nichols. He's one for two. He singled in the first and popped out to O'Brien, the catcher, in the second. Boxers will take a minute to talk about it. Ideally, if you're brocked and you get a ground ball somewhere up the middle for the double play. Yeah, that's the that's the perfect situation right now if you're Brockton, but if you're Bridgewater Rainham, right now you're just trying to find two runners in scoring position. Like I mentioned before, you have runners on the corners. And when you have that runner over at first base, you're sort of just looking for the first ball that's outside the box. And then you just take off and hopefully reach second and third because you know that catcher... And O'Brien's not going to be wanting to throw from first to third to hold that runner. So right now, a good situation here for Bridgewater Rainham and Chomsky just looking to throw strikes. A massive lead at first for the speedy center fielder, Ronan. He's just waiting for that opportunity, Brett. Yeah, he is waiting over there. He's already ready to go. He's probably eight feet off the bag. He'll take off here. Throw down to second, and Chosky tried to cut it off and then inadvertently knocks it down into the middle of the infield. But Manning was unable to advance. Chosky will get a new ball. Stolen base for Ronan, and there's runners on second and third here with one out. It was sort of a weird situation. It almost looked like O'Brien wanted to throw to second base, and Chosky cut down the ball. But you almost couldn't tell if he wanted to fake it to in Chastigate and sort of look like he was making the throw down to second base. But either way, there's now two runners in scoring position. Right at the right fielder, and Manning will be forced to hold. Worth noting that Ronan was about 15 feet off the second base on his lead on that play. So we'll take a quick look here on the replay. You can see how far he advanced. Had to quickly get back to second on the fly ball to right. Big second out of the inning for Inchostegi. They will intentionally walk Kim Morrison here. Morrison was 0 for 2. With a fly out to center and then one to O'Brien, the catcher. So that will load the bases for the cleanup hitter, Nolan DeAndrade, who is also over to a strikeout and a ground out back to the pitcher. Fouls this one off of one of the luxury boxes here at Campanelli. Those are also on the list for some renovations this off season. Rock season starting just about a week and a half, right? Yeah, it's next Thursday as DeAndrade gets plunked there. Free run for the Trojans will score Manning from third. First hit batter for Inchostegi. Ronan moves up to third. Morrison to second. Doyle grounds out to first. Three unassisted will end the inning. It's about the best you could hope for for Brockton. One run is a cross. That came on DeAndrade's hit by pitch, but the Trojans strand three for the first time this game. One run on two hits, no errors. BR leads it four to nothing. We're headed to the bottom of the fourth inning. You are watching Boxer and Trojan Baseball on BCA and BTV back after this. Nick Genitasio will lead off the bottom half of the fourth inning for the Brockton Boxers. Brady Ensko and Sammy Balti also do up for Brockton. Genitasio grounded out to shortstop his first time up. Slash is this one foul out of play. Yeah, the biggest thing for Brockton here is just to get men on base. You're just starting to rotate through the second time now, and 
Bridgewater Rainham almost making it through their third time around the lineup. So if you're Bronson, you just want to get guys on and really just play the best of your physical abilities and sort of just see if you can knock around Nichols here. Nichols with the gem so far, just one hit. Tenotasio asks for and is granted time. Another foul off out of play count will remain 0-2. A lot of buzz around baseball in Brockton these days. Of course, that comes mostly via the Brockton Rocks. Four former major leaguers sons on the team. Yeah, there there's a lot of lot of talk going around uh, the Brockton area this off season. Obviously, you mentioned the four sons of uh, four almost Hall of Famer major league players this season. You have. You know, obviously, D'Angelo Ortiz, the son of David Ortiz. Then you have uh, Cade Folk, the son of Keith Folk, former Red Sox closer. And then Very underrated as a Red he, Sox relief he was, pitcher. He was phenomenal, so he'll be around. And then you have Manny Ramirez Jr. And uh, Pedro Martinez Jr. will be back with the Rocks for his second stint this season. So you have four. Those are five, no? Yeah, yeah the son of Gary Sheffield. Makes, it makes fives now, so Jaden Sheffield as well. Thank you for reminding me. So five guys will now be um, sporting the roster this season for the Rocks. Um, and all five of them um, are the heirs of former Major League ball players. So uh, definitely a different roster here for the Rocks this season under General Manager Tom Tracy, who's done a phenomenal job putting all this together. Great pick at shortstop will retire Genitasio. Yeah, you see the replay right here. Just a... A casual play over there for Trent Smith, who's really strong defensively this entire season and just makes it casual there for Catagio. And that it looks like Nichols is going to be done for the day. Yeah, I don't want to get him into the MIAA pitch limit if you don't have to. Keep him fresh for a big stretch of games. Next week is the MIAA regular season starts to wind down. It looks like it will be the left fielder coming in to pick up the tab that would be Kevin Doyle going back to the Rocks the Blue Jays thought they were great in in very good shape when they had three major leaguer sons on <laughs> on their minor league system yeah you had Kevin Biggio and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I believe are the two biggest names right now both of which are now in the major league roster so this is this a different and, uh, and Bo Bichette and Bo Bichette, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. So there's just so many names to go around, and it just goes to show how much baseball has really been picked up from father to son over the last few years. And this next generation of athletes is starting to really come in and take over now. I mean, you just had a whole bunch of names that I listed off: Jaden Sheffield coming from Georgetown University, D'Angelo Ortiz, and Manny Ramirez Jr. jumping board ship, and our manager Reggie Williams for this year first. Uh, year as manager of the Rocks. He was a former ball player for the uh, Angels of Anaheim. So this is definitely a lineup and a coaching staff that's well seasoned and familiar with the uh, culture of Major League Ball. So it'll be a change of pace here for the Rocks and it looks like it's going to be for the better. I'm going a little deeper when the community sees that the new owners are putting money into the operation and trying to bring in these big names and fix up a, a stadium that has been a little bit dilapidated in the, in the past. They're spending the money, get the new lights, the scoreboards working again, new office space, luxury boxes are going to be renovated. And they'll get Campanelli back to tip-top shape. It's all coming it's all coming together and it just goes to show how much of a process this is and how much everybody's putting in uh, together. So, it'll be an exciting season and there's a lot in store for, you know, the town of Brockton and uh, what's, hold, what's here to hold for the future, but Donna's the new pitcher here, and we are back to rolling here in this ball game. So it'll be three and a third for Nichols. Just one hit. Now we will see number 11 is the new pitcher. That is Shea Donna.
Tosses in strike one to Ensko, who was a strikeout victim of Nichols in the first inning. High pop-up, towering a mile in the air to shallow center. Catch eventually made by the second baseman for the second out of the inning. Yeah, a good play there for Longinus, who just, is, just didn't have to move too much, just enough over by the bag, and just a casual pop-up there for him. So two quick outs here for the Trojans, and Shea Dunn already off to a good start. Sammy Balti grounded to third his first time up. It's a ball one outside. It's a beautiful shot of those new LED lights. They told me not to touch the panel on the wall. Apparently those change color amongst other things. Yeah. Not only is Postman working camera, but they charged him with policing me and not letting me get near that tablet. <laughs> Ball and a strike to Balti. Swing in and miss. Donna looks strong so far. That was a fastball. The one two from Shea Donna. Outside, count evens. Uh, two balls, two strikes. It'll be Adam Perez should Balti reach base. Ball three is outside, count moves full. Yeah, it's tough thinking here if you're Shea Donna, just want to find that groove back and not let a runner here on for Adam Perez, who holds the only hit so far for Brockton. The payoff pitch is ball four outside. First walk for Donna. First walk of the game for Brockton Boxer hitting. That'll be Perez who singled his first time up. The speedy Balti on first. We'll see if he stays there for long with two outs. Middle infield is very deep on the out edge of the outfield grass. First pitch to Perez. Outside ball one. Yeah, if you're Perez, you're just looking to continue this Tau going here. You have a runner on first with two outs, and you have that confidence on your shoulder with the hit back in the second inning. So you're just looking to make yourself two for two and really just look for another solid piece of hitting that put your runners in scoring position with a potential to score. Hard foul down the left field line by Perez, one and one. Balti takes his lead. Donna checks over. Swing and a miss. Strike two for Perez. He was expecting fastball and got off speed. The one two from Shea Donna. Outside. Pump fake down to first. For Morrison, no throw. Two outs on the scoreboard. You have to imagine that the runner at first and Balti could be on the move here. It looks like he is doing so. He holds again. This one is fouled straight up and out of play. Loud one hitting the roof of our press box up here. Count remains two and two. One on two outs here in the bottom half of the fourth. Here's a rocket out to the left center field gap. Balti turns second and he'll be forced to hold. Could have made it. The throw offline gets all the way through to the catcher Morrison. Runners on first and second with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, second hit here for Perez. You can see he really just 
took the ball to the barrel there and put it out towards shallow left field. Just like I mentioned before, just enough to move your runners. And now another big confidence booster here for Brockton. And you have a runner in scoring position. A good situation here for your pitchers and, and in Chostagy. Action in the Trojan bullpen. It is Dylan Cronin that is warming up. And Chostagy swings at the first pitch and fouls it out of play. That one tagging the Shaw Center part of the campus here. Yeah, Shaw Center certainly holds a lot of responsibilities throughout the season, most recently being a vaccination center. So Campanelli Stadium and the Shaw Center doing their part to help out the local community. 0-1 the count to Jezekiel and Shostagy. Fouls it straight back. Now 0-2 to the boxer pitcher. You know, Matt, there's a lot of times where baseballs will fly over the netting, but hardly ever does it get up here on the press box. We had a little bet last year during the season, the Rocks broadcasters, where... Could this ball actually reach the press box? And coincidentally, no, it did not. Uh, so there's a very likely chance that you will not see a baseball appear in the press box today. Doesn't happen often. I, I, I want to say that I saw former Red Sox broadcaster Don Orsillo catch one once in all of the years that he was doing games for Nesson. I think Castiglione might have gotten one too. but very rare. So we love the bird's eye view from up behind home plate. And Shostagy fouls, tips it into the mitt. The boxers will strand two runners. And BR gets out of the jam. Boxers able to get two on base with two outs. Running Chostagy goes down by way of the K for the second time today. No runs, one hit, no errors. We'll head to the top half of the fifth with the Trojans still leading four to nothing. You're watching Boxer and Trojan Baseball on BTV and BCA. At Social Security, we are always thinking of ways to save you time and make things easier. That's why we created My Social Security. A My Social Security account allows you to access your earnings history and benefits information, request a replacement Social Security card, get a proof of income letter, estimate and apply for benefits, and more. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash myaccount. Social Security. Securing today and tomorrow. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Well, to start the top half of the fifth, Caden Bishop making his way to the Trojan bullpen. It will be Logitus, Cataggio, and Manning do up for Bridgewater Random here in the top of the fifth. They lead it four to nothing over the Brockton Boxers. Logitus has reached base twice. He tripled his last time up. That bomb that two hopped the wall and left. And Chosky back on the hill for the boxers. Works it to a two to one count now on Logitus. Yes, yeah, he misses that one there. And Chosky has really come in for a solid performance so far for the boxers. If you're looking at it as a whole, he's had some solid pitching back and forth, and he's been able to almost go five full innings here. And if you're Brockton, that's something that you really want here. Just depth here and analysis, and just trying to make your team go all the way with as least pitching as you can with the lack of depth on the roster. So, yeah, Full count now to Logitus. Chosky trying to fight back. The payoff pitch, good for strike three. Logitus thought it was ball four low, and Chostagy gets just his second strikeout 
of the game on a beautiful fastball over the outside corner. Mad Dog Matt Nelson, Brett Chavez, bringing you all the action from high atop Campanelli Stadium in Brockton, Massachusetts. One out in the top half of the fifth. That'll be Cataggio. Slaps it to deep right field. It's going to get over the head and roll all the way to the fence. Here goes Cataggio. He's rounding second. The throw comes in. Cataggio holds up at second base on the long turn. And that is allowed double for Tyler Cataggio the first time he's reached base safely today. Yeah, nice play there for Cataggio. You see the replay almost just soared that a little too fast over the head of Keane. Yeah, nobody was covering their bag over at second, so he had all the time in the world to really work around with, and now he's getting pinch ran for over at second. Number 25 is the pinch runner. That, of course, would be Bobby Quill. Yeah, Keane knew a second that ball was hit to right field that he really didn't have a play on it. Just turned around, put his head down, and started sprinting after it. Might have a play on this one. It will go foul into the stands. Manning so far having a good day for himself. He's walked and he's had a single also scoring a run. So a good day here for Manning looking to advance the pinch runner and Quill over at second. I think this is a 5 nothing ball game. Big lead for Quill. Not held on. Chopper down the third baseline. That goes foul. On two now the count to Manning with Trent Smith waiting on deck for the Trojans. The 0-2 from Jezekiel and Chostegi. He is fouled straight back. Taking a big hit off of that Brockton Rocks logo on the press box. Count remains 0-2. The pitch is just a bit low for ball one. Right at the third baseman, and nobody was at second for the potential double off. Yeah, you have to be happy for one, but just a tough break for Adam Perez over at third. You see he made the catch, and he's looking to see if anybody's covering over the at second base, but Genitasio couldn't be there in time for Brockton, and so they'll have to settle for two outs and still have that runner over at second. Check swing, it was a strike anyway to Smith, who's one for two. He flew out to left field his last time up, also singled back in the second inning. The number nine hitter in the Trojan lineup. Pops him up to right field, keen under it, and makes the grab for out number three. The Trojans strand another runner. No runs, one hit, no errors. Led to the bottom half of the fifth. Bridgewater Random still getting the better of it. Four to nothing over the Brockton Boxers. You are watching MIAA Baseball on Bridgewater Television and Brockton Community Access. We're back in a flash. The new Trojan pitcher is Dylan Cronin. Andrew Patrick is warming up in the Trojan bullpen. Brett Shavs and Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing all the action from high atop Campanelli Stadium on a kind of cold, overcast, misty day. The moisture has thankfully moved away from the ballpark here. 
Three pitches, three strikes, and now one out in the bottom half of the fifth. That was Jackson O'Brien going down by way of the strikeout. Cooper Card was hit by a pitch in his first varsity at bat. Swings and misses at strike one there. Cronin seems to really be working that fastball. He fooled O'Brien on three pitches there, and so far he's got the count in his uh, advantage here. Nothing in two now as he blows another fastball away. And not a lot of Trojans have hit that 25 MIAA pitch limit here in this game. Of course, the starter did. That was James Nichols. Slow chopper to third. It gets under the glove. And Card is on for the second time today. That error will be charged to the third baseman, Ryan Manning. Yeah, if you look underneath, and just barely missed his glove there. So it looks like it did tap it enough where they will charge him with the error. But nonetheless, Cooper Card aboard for the second time today. In both times, he hasn't gotten a hit. Still just two hits for the boxers on the afternoon. Ball one comes in low to Brett Keen. He grounded out into that weird 5-3-6 double play his last time up. Skies one to right field here. Catch is made, no advancement for Card. Good play by Nolan DeAndrade to get over. So now it'll be Brady Foreman. He's 0 for 2. Grounded to first his last time up. One on, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Strike one to Foreman. Genitasio on deck should Foreman reach safely. Fouled off to the backstop. No balls, two strikes to Brady Foreman. Yeah, for Foreman here, you're just looking to fight away here. Both times you've been down nothing in two. Hasn't faced a count where a ball's been in the situation, so just looking to stay a little more patient here. There it is. There's ball one inside. Count moves to one and two. One, two from Cronin. Grounded back up the middle on the chopper. The shortstop will take it himself. And the boxers strand one more. Six unassisted on the inning ending put out. No runs, no hits, one error for the Trojans, their first of the game. One boxer left stranded on base. We'll head to the top of the sixth. The Trojans still lead it four to nothing. You are watching MIAA Baseball on BCA and BTV. We're back after this. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Here we go, top half of the sixth inning. Two more to go here at Campanelli Stadium. Four nothing in favor of the visiting Trojans of Bridgewater Rainham. And Shostaki back on the bump there. This one lined out towards center field and it'll drop for base knock in front of Cooper Cart. That was Colin Ronane with the base set. And so one pitch and the Trojans already have a man on. It looked like Card might have a play on that ball. Opted to wait it out. Grab it off the hop. See Nichols who is one for three. So here's the two spot hitter in James Nichols. 
As you mentioned, man, one for three. He's got a single and then a pop-up and a line out. Jostegi, the next pitch. Runner goes. Ronan on the move. The throw from O'Brien. The tag on a second and just barely missed to Genitasio. A good effort there by the boxer defense, but Ronan, he's in that leadoff spot for a reason. Now he's in scoring position. You're not going to get the speedy center fielder on many of those. Got a great jump on the ball. And this one fouled right back into the netting. And so a quick nothing in two count here for Nichols. That was a strike on the pitch where O'Brien threw down. Nichols remaining in the lineup, switching from pitcher to designated hitter for those keeping score at home. Nasty curveball. Came in inside. Ball and two strikes now for James Nichols. Taking a hefty lead over at second is Ronan. And the one-two pitch. This one choppered over to third. Perez makes the play by the line. The long throw over to first base. Yeah. Missing the pick is Ensko. And moving from third to home is Ronan. He will get there in plenty of time. And scoring. Five-nothing Trojans now on a tough play there for Adam Perez from third. And the BR team is really taking hold of this ball game. They're capitalizing on the mistakes. You got the speedy center fielder, Ronan, at second. As soon as he saw that ball was through the first baseman, it didn't matter how far it went. He was turning the corner and heading home. That goes down as an E3 on Brady Ensko. And, and Chostegui will step off and send the runner in. Nichols back to the bag. Here's Cam Morrison back up to the plate. He's so far 0 for 2 with an intentional walk back in the fourth inning of play. And the deal. And this one popped up in foul territory. Rushing for it is Ensko and O'Brien, but they can't get there. O'Brien had no idea where that one was headed. Might have had a play on it if he got a better jump. You know, it was already on its way down by the time O'Brien realized where it was. No outs here for the Trojans. Nichols playing mind games now with Nchostegi. When you're in these kind of situations, you sort of want to have that tight lead to Making Chostegui, or rather in general, the pitcher think what you're doing. He goes to second. Here's the throw from O'Brien. The tag by Genitasio, and that one will be safe as well. So, Bourne now in scoring position is Nichols. And Morrison has a chance to jump on with another RBI potentially. The throw was very accurate. If it had a little more heat on it, they would have had Nichols. Big lead here at second. He might be thinking about taking off for third. Two balls and a strike no after that ball. So far, Morrison has not faced too high of a count. This is the longest count he's faced so far today. His previous longest was a nothing, was a 1-0 count, rather, back in the opening inning. And the 2-1 pitch, he holds inside on that one, making it a hitter's count at 3-1. On deck is Nolan DeAndrade. Chosky sets, stealing from second to third is James Nichols, and he's going to get sent to him. That's a base hit over on the right side. Nichols will score, and it's an RBI single for Cam Morrison. Nice piece of hitting, and... With that, the Trojans take a 6-0 lead. A little bit of opposite field hitting. Line drive off of the end of the bat. Boxers expecting pull. Easily scores Nichols. Another meeting at the mound for the Boxers. Only three pitchers listed on this Sprockton roster. Balti being one of them, he's going to be ineligible to pitch today after the first game of the week. 
Yeah, like we mentioned before, when you have a tight roster like this, it's <laughs> tough for situations to go. And it looks like they're going to make a pitching change here for Shostaki. It looks like Ensko is going to be the one that's pitching. Ensko and Balti are the only other two pitchers on the roster, both of them listed as starters, and Shostaki is listed as a reliever. So it looks like it's not going to be Ensko. Rather, it's going to be one of the infielders here. Let's take a look at the... Looks like it's uh, Nick Genitasio. So Genitasio will be the one that will relieve, and it looks like they're going to move Ensko around. We'll see what the infield decides here. And so Chastagy uh, will jump into the field here. So the multitude of defensive changes look to be upcoming here. We'll see where Enchostegi winds up. So we will take a brief pause here as Genitazio takes some warm up. 6 nothing now at Campanelli Stadium in favor of the Trojans. You're listening to Brockton Community Access and Bridgewater TV. Presentation of Bridgewater, Rainham, and Brockton Boxer Baseball. So Ezekiel and Shostagi is done after five full innings pitched and a pickoff attempt for Genitasio will not be in time. And Shostagi will move over to first base and Brady Ensko will slide to second. Stamping in the box here is DeAndre. Swing and a miss. The throw from O'Brien over to Ensko. Tag not in time there on Morrison. So he'll advance. The new pitcher here is Genitasio. And so he'll have a runner in scoring position now with no outs. 0-1 count here for DeAndre. That is in Chostigi's runner at second base. <laughs> and the deal. And this one is a moonshot out towards left center. This is going to get down by the wall for extra bases. Morrison will score, rounding second, heading to third is DeAndre. He's going to get there with plenty of time. Stand-up triple for Nolan DeAndre. He makes it 7-0 BR. And this game is running away in favor of the Trojans. Yeah, just an absolute shot off what looked like a hanging curveball. Another one that three or four hop defense in the deepest part of the ballpark out in left center field. The tenth hit of the day for the Trojans. Seven runs on those ten hits. Start out with a 1-0 count here to Kevin Doyle. So far he is one for three with a single back in the first inning. And the next pitch, this one inside, making it 2-0. So all three of the top three hitters for Bridgewater Rainham's lineup have scored with DeAndre 90 feet away over at third. Doyle looking to drive him in here in the five hole. And this one downstairs as well. It'll make it three balls, no strikes now for him. Kevin Doyle, of course, a longtime Giants Futures member. We mentioned before many of this Trojan roster playing for the Giants Futures. Kevin Doyle, Cam Morrison, Owen Gray as well played for the Trojans back then. And 
And it looks like they'll go ball four here. And so a four-pitch walk here for Kevin Doyle. It'll put runners on the corners. And just a tough start here for Genitasio looking to get out of this inning. Run number eight sitting over at third base. And a pickoff attempt over to first won't be in time. Evan Samsel is the pinch hitter. And yeah, getting set and the deal. This one will be down in the dirt. Popping up there is O'Brien. He will not make a throw. So first and third still. This is Evan Samsel, as Matt mentioned. Former Taunton Tiger transferred to Bridgewater Rainham High School. He takes over for Logitus. Take a look at this last pitch here. That one airmailed. Luckily, O'Brien was able to pop up and catch it. 2-0 now for Samsel. Genitazio gets set. Runner moves from first to second. Sliding over is Foreman. He'll make the play. Long throw from short. Did he get there inside? Just safe over at first base. Scoring there was DeAndre in the process. And so counted as an RBI for Evan Samsel. He beats out the throw. And now it is 8-0 Bridgewater Rainham. Yeah, bang, bang, play over at first base. The coach might have made the call for the, uh, for the umpire who was across the infield. Trojans have their 11th hit of the day. That run charge to Shostagy. So now it's all Genitasio. Stepping in now is the new man in Katashio. And a step off here. They'll take a look back. Katashio was pinch run four back in the fifth inning after his double. He also has two ground outs to Foreman. And the deal. And this is lined out towards left field. This will drop four base hit. Rounding third and potentially scoring. Here's the gonna throw try to the play. It. Oh, what a dime! The outfield assist from Sammy Balti. What a play there for Sammy Balti. The throw all the way down to the plate, and they get the put out. This game will stay at eight nothing. However, runners will stay at second and third. Tough play here for the boxers defensively. They get it done though. Tataggio credited with the single. He advances to second on the throw home. Absolute bullet by Balti. So I'm start to wind up for that. As soon as that ball hit the grass out there. Just look at that outfield assist. Absolute bullet. And he had Luke Barry by, oh, about 35 feet. This one, a hard grounder over to second. Pickpocketing it as Ensko fires to Enchostegui, and they'll get the out. Meanwhile, the run will score in Samson. Sliding over to third is Katagio making it. 9-0 now in favor of the bridgewater Rainham Trojans. Almost 10 runs here. Great backhand stab by Ensko at second. So with that, it'll bring up Ryan Manning. Looking to draw in this 10th run over at third, and the curveball this one misses. Almost got away from O'Brien, getting tripped up there in the process was Katashio. He'll stay over at third. This is Trent Smith at the plate, Manning with that hard grounder. It's 
Smith one for three. Single two flyouts, one to left, one to right. Genitasio gets set, still runner over at third, and the deal, that one in the dirt, and that will just trickle. O'Brien takes a look over to third, nothing there. Ball and two strikes now for Trent Smith. And this one flied out, and that'll be foul, so we'll stay at one and two. Two outs here, top of the sixth inning here. Bridgewater Rainham looking for their tenth run. And the put away. And that one in the dirt, almost getting away from O'Brien. He luckily finds it again. And it'll take another hard stare over to third. Yeah, great block there for the boxer catcher. Those could be very dangerous, especially when you don't know how it's going to react once it hits the dirt. 2-2 Two -two count once again, and here's the deal. Fastball, that one grounded hard, but foul. That will be on the inner part of the line, and will trickle out towards left field. If they can get to him, it'll be the leadoff hitter coming back up here for the Trojans. Yep, Smith, the ninth batter for the Trojans in this inning. The deal, that one flied out and foul. That'll get over the netting on the backstop. Genitazio looking to close out this inning. He gets set, and here's the put away once again. Fastball down the middle, and that will just trickle over the dirt, so the count will reach full at three and two now. Another great block there for O'Brien. Not that you want to see him have to make those kinds of stops, but when tested, he's been strong. And the deal. Now when a grounder over to third, Perez makes the scoop, fires over to first base, and making the scoop there is Chostegui, and he saves the inning here for the Boxers. Good play over at first base, and with that, the inning is retired. Every single batter hit in the lineup for Bridgewater Rainham, and they score five more, making it 9 nothing. We head to the bottom half of the sixth. You're listening to a joint presentation by BCA and BTV. Bottom half of the six, it's the two, three, and four hitters in Genitasio, Ensco, and Balti getting sent to take some swings here as they face the new pitcher. It is Andrew Patrick coming out of the bullpen here, relieving the latest pitcher in Dylan Cronin, who pitched two-thirds and finished out that inning, rather the full inning. It was Shea Donna that pitched the two-thirds, and then the three and a third accredited to James Nichols. So the fourth pitcher here for Bridgewater, Rainham. As he takes on Nick Genitasio, now the pitcher here for the Boxers. And the opening pitch here from the right-hander. And he goes for the fastball, swinging a foul tip there. All the pitching changes due to the MIAA pitch limit rule. If you throw more than 25, you have mandated rest. Then there's a couple of tiers. The upper limit is 115. If you throw more than 75, you have to rest for four whole days before you can throw again. Little dribbler. It looks that was like a wonky one. It was a wonky one. They're going to rule it foul, says the home plate umpire. is almost as though it was going to trickle back inside the baseline. Let's take a look at the replay. You saw Genitasio caught it on the inside of the bat, and it just landed on the inside part of the infield grass, and Andrew Patrick was luckily able to get there in time to where he could land on it to call it a foul ball. Patrick slid awkwardly there. We'll, we'll have to check the leg. But he almost went down as if he was going to slide, but then pulled back up in case he ended up running into Genitasio. 
And that little would-be collision allowed the ball that had a whole lot of spin on it to get over the line into foul territory. And the 0-2 here from Patrick. And that one right down Broadway for a strike three. Fastball down the middle, and he gets out number one in a hurry. Three pitches, one out here for Patrick. And now he'll face Brady Ensko. Ensko so far 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a pop-up. Now playing second base, he slid over from first after Enchostegui took over, and he's plunked in the hand there, so he'll take his bag. Second hit batsman for boxers today. They take a look, the inside pitch just barely got Enchostegui on that hand. It looked like he wanted to barrel up, and it got him. Natasio's strikeout was number six for Trojan pitching today. The deal. And swing and a miss there for Sammy Balti. He'll start out down 0-1. As we approach the final couple outs here in the bottom of the sixth and in this ball game. And what has been a fast game here at Campanelli Stadium, home of the Brockton Rocks of the Futures League. And the next pitch here from Patrick, right back to him, takes a look to second, fires over for one, the throw to first for two, and they got a double play. Easy peasy, one, two, three here for Andrew Patrick. It turns out to be a one, six, three double play, and that'll retire the side. We move to the top half of the seventh, boxers don't score any runs. You're listening to a joint presentation from Brockton Community Access and BTV. What a replay that is. And you have to be proud of your Trojan defense there. We'll return after a short moment's time. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, no, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Trojan running, you can see Brett has been running all over Brockton pitching all day. Quick look at all of the stolen bases for Bridgewater Random today. Yeah, this has certainly, Matt, been a game where Bridgewater Random has been able to run all over the place. And you see just taking advantage of small ball. That's one of the big things you have to recognize in the game of baseball is it's not always about the big hits or just trying to make the spectacular play. You could bunt every day and manage bases loaded and score a couple runs on that. We saw the Pittsburgh Pirates the other day. Did not record a single hit in the ball game, and they somehow beat the Cincinnati Reds. That's because it's the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Reds have had themselves a, a doozy of a season this far. We'll put it at that, but it'll be a 1-0 count to start out the leadoff hitter here in a substitution in Kieran Carson. He'll take over for Colin Ronan in the Trojan offensive lineup. Count will now advance to 2-0. Genitasio back on the mound to wrap up this ball game for Brockton. And that one just missed there, so things will advance to 3-0. On deck is still James Nichols, the designated hitter. Genitasio gets set, and the deal from the right-hander, this one, right down Main Street, and that'll hit for a strike. Hitters count now to Kieran Carson. Coach Connolly, uh, Bridgewater, right him electing to stay with the lefty in the batter's box there, and it'll be a five-pitch walk here for Carson, and he will take it off of Genitasio. Coach Mike Connolly here for Bridgewater Random has himself a track record and a resume you don't see often. Currently a major league pitcher. 
in the minor league farm system with the Volcanoes, a short season Class A team for the San Francisco Giants. So when he's off for the season, he's here as the head coach and manager for the Trojans, taking over in his first season now as manager. And with that, we will get a mound visit here from O'Brien. But certainly something you don't see often, a head coach and a major league ball player at the same exact time. And there he is right there. And he's having himself a season 15 and 5 hours. Trojans looking for win number 16 today. Pushing towards the MIAA playoffs. There's a lot of a lot of baseball talent in the area. Of course, the head coach of the Cardinals, Spellman Cardinals, Steve Paraxis, played AAA for the Chicago Cubs system. The boxer saw Spellman just a couple of weeks ago. Certainly never know what you're going to find in the area and it's a small world especially with the amount of players that go in and out of major league and minor league baseball you're certainly going to find the talent knowledge and experience and you mentioned as well between the trojans the boxers the high school over there a cardinal spellman and this one will get away from o'brien stealing the base there in plenty of time is kieran carson he will stand up with the back it's a 3-1 count now for James Nichols. Three one pitch here and the deal and that'll be ball four and so the, in the dirt they throw over to third base the tag for Perez did he get it inside and they're gonna say he was out. It almost looked like Nichols had the bag but Adam Perez gets the benefit of the doubt and it'll be out number one here for the Bridgewater Radham Trojans. Let's take a look at the replay. That's a bang bang play. Umpire wasn't really. On top of it, he was behind the pitcher's mound. He looked over, saw the glove under the runner, so made the judgment call. One out. So with one out, it'll bring in Cam Morrison, the catcher. Runner at first base after the walk for Nichols. And you mentioned earlier the umpire was towards the backside of Nichols. So had a tough angle looking in. 1-0 count here for Morrison. Based a 3-1 count is single and run in his last at bat. And the deal. And that one bounces, gets away from O'Brien. Couldn't find it in his glove. Turning from second to third potentially is Nichols. It was Kieran Carson, rather, over at third base that was the runner out. So the lone runner now is Nichols, as we mentioned, over at second base now after the stolen base. 3-0 count here for Morrison. On deck is Nolan Dandrade. And the deal. And a hard grounder on the third base line, and that'll be foul just outside the back there over at third base. You know, we mentioned the amount of experience of the coaching staff as well. You take a look for Bridgewater Rainham, right there he is, Coach Ray, former Major League ball player for the Kansas City Royals back in the 1990s. And this one popped up. This one will head into the bleachers and foul here at Campanelli Stadium. Oh, it almost came back and clocked Janet Diver in the back of the head. Luckily, she's okay over there, but... With that, we move to three and two here for Kim Morrison. Janet, a great employee of the Brockton High Athletic Department. Of course, AD Kevin Cairo also in attendance. This one pops up, still in fair territory. Here from O'Brien, can he make the catch in territory? Yes, he can. Taking a small lead almost halfway there is Nichols, and it will retreat back to the bag. And, and Nick, so. Nichols looked over at an empty third base. Nobody was within 10 feet, so he thought about taking off on the tag. Yeah, let's take a look at this replay. So, 
pop up and foul on Saratori. O'Brien's able to rush over and make the catch, but you see Adam Perez coming forward as well. No one waved off there for O'Brien, and so Nichols almost had the back, but he'll stay over at second. And so with two outs, that brings in DeAndre to again towering pop fly over on the third baseline. Coming in for it is Perez, and he just makes the catch for out number three. No runs will come across here for Bridgewater Rainham and the Brockton Boxers come away scoreless. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Last chance here for some offense for the Boxers. You're listening to a joint presentation from BCA and BTV. Last at bats and some last chances here for the Brockton Boxers down nine nothing in this ball game in the bottom half of the seventh. It'll be Caden Bishop here to close out this game here for the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans and try to get three quick outs here, but what a ball game this has been in the yearly tradition between BR and Brockton in this yearly tradition here at Brockton Community Access and Bridgewater TV. Thanks so much for joining us once again here in the broadcast. Brett Shops always alongside Mad Dog Matt Nelson to my left, and Matt, this has certainly been, you know, a ball game for the ages and the Newly renovated Campanelli Stadium, and what's been, unfortunately, a gloomy day here at the ballpark. Yeah, the Cape Cod Cafe Cup, the spring edition. These two teams <laughs> play each other on the gridiron every Thanksgiving. Also one of the very, very fun joint productions of BCA and BTV. Quick nothing in two here for Adam Perez. He is two for two with a pair of singles in this ball game. With the new LED lighting starting to show. No dark spots on this field, Brett, at all. Yeah, we mentioned before the new lighting system here at Campanelli Stadium is absolutely stupendous. You can even see like the, the mid-tone lighting above the pole. It's all red around and Certainly gives this a new ambiance here at the stadium as Perez fouls that one off. Still a one and two count here with no outs. And Chostegui, the batter on deck here for the boxers. And the deal. And swing and a miss, he got him strike three. So Caden Bishop gets the first out here. And a nice pitch there will send them two away here from winning this ball game. A nice pitch, looked like a two-seam fastball from Bishop there right down Broadway. And here's the next pitch here on two, and John Stegui. Bishop working with a fast pace here. Yeah, very similar to Cronin, who we saw earlier in this ball game. Fast paced and really sort of working that fastball combination. He goes for it again, but this will be low and away. A ball and a strike now here for John Stegui who threw five innings today and allowed seven runs across the plate, just two strikeouts. He grounds this to short off of the chest and a fire over to first base and making the catch over there for the second out is Tyler Cataggio. And with that, the Trojans are one out away from winning this game. A tough hop right there off of the side of the pitcher's mound. Looks like it caught a little bit of a lip. Handling the bounce well. No mistake on the throw to first. So with that, Trent Smith. With that last chance here for Jackson O'Brien, the catcher. He's had himself a busy day behind the plate, trying to track some pitches down and a lot of pop-ups in foul territory. 2-0 count here for him from Caden Bishop. Now the fifth pitcher that Bridgewater Rainham has thrown today in a bullpen game. This one at Chopper, foul territory, and a backhander will officially rule a foul there by the third baseman, in Ryan Manning. A master, clutch, uh, master class by Coach Connolly of how to avoid losing pitchers for uh, the mandatory rest days. Yeah, you can certainly work your way around it, and he has, and so a strike there for O'Brien. 
And this makes it 2-2. Here comes BR. Can they close out this game? Middle part of the infield playing along the grass. Corners in, and the pitch. This one just downstairs. And misses three balls and two strikes. So full count here for Jackson O'Brien. On deck if they can get there is Cooper Card. Caden Bishop, the right-hander, gets set. And the put away once again. Fastball, corner just missed. Just a little bit outside. The Trojan dugout wants to know where it missed. Let's take another look. That look just down the plate from our angle up here. Couldn't miss by much less than that. One on, two outs. And this one popped up in foul territory, racing in for it as Doyle, and he makes the catch. Sliding over by the dirt in left field in foul territory. And that'll close out this ball game. Bridgewater Rayham takes home the win with a final score of 9-0 here at Campanelli Stadium. And they surge to win number 16 on the season. 5-12, the boxers fall. And the Trojans will move to 16-5 on the season. What a day this was here at Campanelli Stadium on a gloomy day, but it turned out to be a nice ball game. Full seven innings here. And, Matt, you can't ask for more for this tradition between BR and Brockton. Yeah, the Trojans pitching combining for just two hits to the Brockton Boxers. Two errors committed by Brockton. And uh, that played a difference, Brett, in this ball game. You capitalized on those mistakes early. One of those errors resulted in a run back in the first inning. And that might have got under Brockton's skin a little bit. But BR didn't give them much to work with. In the defensive side, they were placing the ball excellently and uh, not swinging at garbage. So nine runs on 12 hits for the Trojans. They get the win here today for win number 16. And just taking a look at the pitching recap for Brockton, it was Jezekiel and Chonstegi who started the game through five innings pitched, had nine hits, allowed seven runs, and just two strikeouts. And then Genitazio came in, allowed two runs, on the two innings pitch that he had. Then looking over for Bridgewater Rainham, it was started for James Nichols through three and a third. Had three strikeouts and only one hit. And the only other hit was recorded for Shea Donna, who threw the last two thirds of that fourth inning. And he only allowed a hit. And then Dylan Cronin, Andrew Patrick, and Caden Bishop were the three other relievers throwing an inning each. No hits allowed, and each recorded a strikeout. And so with that, we will say farewell here at Campanelli Stadium. One last look at manager Mike Connolly as he celebrates his late win in the season as they surge towards the MIAA playoffs here in Division I High School Baseball. So with that, we say goodbye here on the broadcast in this joint presentation for Brockton Community Access and Bridgewater TV. For my co-host here, Matt Dog, Matt Nelson, my name is Brett Shavs. We say so long for now. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.